Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today we have a little bit of a different video. <laughs> I have been making kind of like a not like secret TBR but like a fun TBR challenge for myself that'll come out later and it has something to do with old books that I used to love and so I thought it would be a very fun video to do to tell y'all about all the books that I loved as a tween <laughs> if you don't know what like a tween is it's like middle school age but they're not like middle grade if you know what I'm saying. It's hard to explain, like t in between like middle grade and teen books, YA books. Now some of these are YA, but these are just the books that I loved in middle school specifically that I feel like other people in middle school would love as well. I was obsessed with every single one of these books. I would reread them often. <laughs> There's fantasy, dystopian, contemporary, obviously romance. I believe every single one of these books has a romance in it and I will talk about that in a minute as well. <laughs> I also have a bunch of series on this list. I can hold up the whole series for some of the books but not all of them because there's maybe like 10 or 12 books in the series. <laughs> I'll talk about that when those pop up as well. First I'm going to get the very obvious series out of the way. We have The Hunger Games Trilogy by Suzanne Collins. I was obsessed with The Hunger Games. It was one of the first series or books that I ever read that really really got me into books that were outside of just contemporary romance. When I first read these books I was so sucked into the story and after I finished the trilogy I just wanted more books like this and it introduced me to so many more books on this list and so I'm very grateful for this series. I know that A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes comes out only in a couple of days and I am so excited about it. I am actually doing a Hunger Games read-along with uh, three other lovely ladies who will be linked down below. Um, we have done a live show for every single one of these books and we reread them together and we're going to be doing a uh, live show for the new book when it comes out as well so stay tuned for that but this book series is very near and dear to my heart of course and I owe a lot to Suzanne Collins let's just say that. <laughs> this is probably the book that I've reread the most in my entire life. Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. Ooh, this book series. I love this book series so much. My favorite book in the series is Breaking Dawn. I don't know like these young adult books for most of them, the last book in the series is my favorite because that's when everything gets wrapped up and maybe the couple gets together in the end or something. So Breaking Dawn's my favorite, Mockingjay is my favorite. This book series like put me in such a mood where I only wanted to read this book over and over and over again. I believe I read this book for the first time in fifth grade. My home in fifth grade was the library. And so I found the first book in the library and I just reread it over and over and over and over again. Fifth grade me would only read this book. <laughs> Midnight Sun was just announced that it's coming out later this year and I am so 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 excited because I've been dying for Midnight Sun for like almost a decade. Like it's... <laughs> now another Stephanie Meyer also appears on this list. The Host. This book I love so much. I actually would reread this book at least once a year and that's saying a lot because it is a hunker chunker of a book. I think this was the first time I read a huge book, like a tome. Like this was the first tome I ever read. I don't really know if it's considered adult or YA. There's no like explicit content in it, but I don't think it's in the YA section in a bookstore. But I originally found this book because I was rereading Twilight for the millionth time in middle school and I was um, sitting in one of my math classes and there was a sub that day and she saw that I was reading Twilight She was like, have you ever read the host before? I was like, no, what is that? And she told me about the host and I was like, I need to get that book right now I read it fell in love with it fell in love with the characters the romance in here <sighs> Twilight really sparked my love for romance I think because all of these books have romance in it every single one of these books has romance in it and that's what really got me into loving romance. Even Middle School, I would not read a book if it did not have a romance in it because I found it so boring. Like I needed that romance element in it. And this is one of my favorite romances of all time. So this is a like sci-fi book where aliens are kind of like little beings and they take over planets and inhabit planets by putting themselves into bodies. So like you can tell if it's an alien or a human by the ring around their eye. That means an alien is inside of their body and has taken over the human's body. Um, so this is about Wanderer and she has taken over the body of Melanie. But Melanie is not going down without a fight. Wanda realizing that humans are more than just something that you can inhabit. And there's a romance because Melanie had a boyfriend and Melanie has a brother and it's Wanda's conflicting feelings with the boyfriend and the brother and also Melanie. Like it's so good. The 
The movie is great and all, but the book is 100% way better. I love this book a lot. <laughs> Here is a series that I have reread many times as well. We have the Maximum Ride series by James Patterson. This book series is a million books long. I did not read the last two in the series because I did not feel like they were needed. I think I stopped at Nevermore, which is maybe book number nine or eight, I don't remember. But then he came out with another book years later, even though he said that Nevermore was the last book in the series. And apparently now he's coming out with like a spin-off book about Max and Fang's child. And Pierre Ford, who's one of my favorite booktubers of all time, I will link her down below. She read it, an art copy, and literally said it was the worst thing she ever read in her entire life. So I don't plan on reading that. This ragtag group of kids have been experimented on when they were young and they now have wings. They have wings that can fold and can, they can fly, basically. These kids can fly. And so they're called the flock and Maximum Ride is the kind of like leader, the mom of the group. She's like 15, 14, I don't remember, but she takes care of the flock and makes sure that um, they never go back to that lab. They escape the lab. She makes sure all of her flock escaped and she's just like trying to keep her family flock safe. This book series is one of the main things I loved as a kid. It was just so much fun and I never read anything like this before, obviously. Look, and so here's this. My number one favorite book of all time. This is middle school Avery writing in her books. <sighs> <laughs> um, but this book series is amazing for younger audience. I don't know what I would think about this series nowadays. I don't think I would love it as much as I did. So that's why I do not plan on probably ever rereading this series because I really don't want to like spoil that awesome experience that I had as a kid. So next we have Olive's Ocean by Kevin Hanks. Hopefully that's how you pronounce his name. I'm not sure. But this is the first book or one of the first books that like made me sob like middle school me made me sob this book is about a main character named martha there's this girl in her class or her grade and her name is olive and olive ends up passing away i don't remember why i don't remember how they were never close but for some reason martha like has this feeling towards olive and is like trying to connect with her even though she's already passed it's also martha trying to deal with the fact that she starts to have a crush on her neighbor who she used to hate and just like it's like a coming of age a middle school book that i really really love was just like sobbing when i finished it it was such a touching book for me and probably one of my favorite books as a kid for sure next we have the shiver by maggie steve otter so i know that everyone loves the um raven cycle i've read the raven cycle i understand why people love the raven cycle but in all honesty i like these books more than the raven cycle unpopular opinion here but it just holds so much nostalgia for me i can't help but love them so the first book just reminded me so much of twilight this is shiver it's about this girl and when she was a kid she was attacked by wolves in her backyard but then one wolf ends up saving her and like ever since then this one wolf with yellow eyes has always like watched her from the forest like basically looking out for her and then it's years later she's in high school i maybe think she's maybe like 16 this boy ends up on her doorstep and he is shot and she has no idea who this boy is but she helps him and he may or may not be her wolf <laughs> so this book was just like a book that i read after twilight that gave me huge twilight vibes um it's not as good as twilight i will say that i just i fell in love with these characters i fell in love with the love story between the two this is a book series that really 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 just like deepened my love for paranormal romance that's for sure next i have the summer i turned pretty trilogy by jenny han first book is the summer i turned pretty and then it's it's not summer without you and then we will always have summer is the third book i've never read to all the boys i love before read jenny han i've watched the movie but i've never read the books but i read this trilogy constantly as a kid and i really enjoyed them this book series is about this girl named belly and um she goes to like her her family beach house every single summer with her like mom's best friend and their family and there's two brothers in that family that she was grown up with and she ends up liking one brother who's like the bad boy but then the good brother ends up liking her and it's like a tr love triangle thing i just remember loving this series a lot and loving belly i also really connected to her because she's a big swimmer and i was a big swimmer as a kid so that's probably one of the reasons why i love this trilogy as well so so next i have the cupcake queen by heather hepler I honestly don't remember all that much about it. It's very worn and torn and like 
beat up because I would constantly read this book and I would constantly lend it out to people. I think this is about a girl who used to live in New York City. Her mom owned a bakery there, but I think they ended up, her parents ended up getting a divorce, I think. And they moved to this very small town and opened up their own bakery in a small town. And it's like her working in the bakery and then a cute boy always comes into the bakery and it's like their cute romance. And I think this was the first book where like the romance was the most prevalent thing in the book for me. So I think this is another book that really, really got me into romance and made me fall in love with romance. I even remember to this day thinking this couple was one of the cutest things I've ever read about in my entire life. That's probably why I love this book so much. Then I have the Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan. Now this series, um, I actually don't own all of the books. I only own book one and two because I would constantly borrow them from my library as a kid and I have yet to buy the rest of the series which I have no idea why. I loved this book series a lot and Percy and Annabeth were everything to me. <laughs> this is a middle grade story about gods and demigods and this like series also like started my love for Greek mythology. Next I have two books by Michelle Dalton. Now Michelle Dalton wrote um, The 15th Summer and 16th Summer and these were like summer reads about just romance and I loved them so much. I cannot tell you what either of these books are about all I know is that they're romances that take place in summer and they're tween, teen-esque. <laughs> very, very, very like innocent and like just cutesy sweet romance books that I really loved in middle school. I would reread these often. <laughs> I don't remember what they're about, but uh, I sure as heck loved them. Next we have, of course, The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I absolutely loved this book, adored it. It is ripped, it is beaten, it is very well loved. I would lend this book out to just about anyone who wanted it and it became kind of a hot commodity in my middle school for people to read this book after I did it was crazy like I loved this book so much that I would like sit in some of my classrooms when it was like free time or something and like read just sections of it out to people if they wanted to hear it which sounds so cringy at the moment it's very like tabbed and worn and uh, very annotated because I loved Augustus and Hazel so stinking much and I loved John Green for creating these characters. Here's our last series I have to talk about. We have the um, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants series by Anne Brashers. I loved this series so much like so much it was mainly because of the couples and the sisterhood friendship so this book series is about four friends who end up finding a pair of jeans that they all fit into even though they have all different body types and so they think it's like, kind of like magic and so um they end up for one summer end up like shipping the pants to each other on their different vacations and like one of them's in greece one of them's visiting their dad they haven't seen in years one of them's going to mexico and going to a soccer camp the pants get sent like everywhere i just loved the friendship in this book and of course i loved the romance in here there's a romance that happens in greece that is like i was swimming over even in middle school i kind of wish that they would have made the movies into all four of the books instead of just making two movies but uh i digress and the last book on this list is beastly by alex flynn this book is very beat up. <laughs> Fun fact, I would lend this book out to girls in middle school who wanted to read it because I was kind of like the library somewhat for some of these girls and um, they would like write little messages in this book for me like, hey Avery, it's me and like a little heart in their name and like kind of like write their name and say that they read the book which I found actually really cool. I'm um, like, I don't mind if people write in books but um, it was just this book that people ended up like writing little messages to me in which was actually pretty fun. Anyway, this is a young adult book about like a guy who's very popular. This witch like puts a curse on him, show him that there's more to people than just like their looks and stuff. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. The movie is way different than the book and the fact that in the book he looks like Beast from the movie Beauty and the Beast, not like the guy from Beastly. I think maybe they were just like trying to change it up a little bit. This is like the first retelling that I remember reading that I just like connected so much to and I think it really sparked my love for retellings that's for sure. But anyways there you have it. Those are the many many books that I loved in middle school or my tween years. I recommend any of these books for people in middle school. They were just like amazing books for me to read and amazing books for me to get into and really just sparked my love for reading so I'm very grateful for every single one of these books on this list. But anyways thank y'all so so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye!